Stay tuned to Cinemania as we deal with the serious issues and count down political thrillers. We'll also look at the success of legendary actor Sean Connery. And find out which directors are ranked what on Cinemania's Top 5. All this and more as we look at the silver screen's best and worst in Cinemania. But first, we'll count down the best political thrillers from terrorism to war. They're all exciting, but which one will come in at number one? At number five, we find the political thriller V for Vendetta. V for Vendetta is set in a fascist Britain of 2050 and is based on the comic strips of the same name, which were turned into a cult novel in 1988. This film actually sparked controversy for a scene in which terrorists blow up the Houses of Parliament. Do you know why you're here, Evie Hammond? The movie stars Hugo Weaving as the masked man, with Natalie Portman playing a woman who becomes involved with terrorists. You have one chance to save your life. Portman threw herself into the role and even allowed filmmakers to shave her head on camera. Are you ready to cooperate? No. This political thriller was dogged by rumours that its release was delayed because of the London suicide bomb attacks. The film echoes the tragic events, but producers denied they re-edited the scenes which closely mimic the murderous events. This political thriller is realistically scary, making it worthy of fifth position. I wish I wasn't afraid all the time. People should not be afraid of their governments. Government should be afraid of their people. At number four, we find Michael Douglas, Kim Basinger, Kiefer Sutherland and Eva Longoria, who all teamed up for the political thriller, The Sentinel. Douglas played a White House Secret Service agent, Pete Garrison, assigned to protect the First Lady, Basinger. When a fellow agent is murdered, the service's top investigative agent, David Breckenridge, Sutherland, is put on the case. It's kind of a protege of yours, what do you think? He'll follow the evidence wherever it leads him. Meanwhile, a sassy young agent played by Longoria arrives and joins the trio's attempts to uncover the truth. Some of you, he's a legend. Hell, he taught me everything I know. He is smarter and more experienced than all of you. He knows how you think, he knows how you operate, and he will use that against you. Together, they begin to suspect an inside job to assassinate the president, a traitor in the ranks of the Secret Service, the first in the institution's 141-year history. This suspense-filled political thriller comes in in fourth position. Who sent you? Number three on Cinemania's list of top five political thrillers is The Manchurian Candidate. In all those years, I've been denying what every nerve ending in my body is telling me is more real than not. This remake starred Denzel Washington as an army major and a career soldier who grows suspicious about his experience in the first Gulf War after a squad sergeant and son of a powerful senator becomes a candidate for vice president. This is rich people, Manchurian Global, funding bad science to put a sleeper in the White House. The original film, which featured an assassination attempt of a US politician, was released only weeks before the murder of American President John F. Kennedy. The eerie similarities between the film and the real-life events led it to being pulled from theatres. When I think of you, I fear for this country. The remake updates the original's Korean War era setting to the aftermath of the first Gulf War and comes in in third position. From all of its enemies. At number two, we find the political thriller the Quiet American. The movie, based on the Graham Greene novel and starring Michael Caine, received widespread critical acclaim. There is another reason why I came up here. It was a movie that was almost never released, but The Quiet American managed to overcome backlash from the September 11 attacks. Touching on early American involvement in Vietnam, the 25 million US dollar film sat on the shelves for about a year. That was after its U.S. studio decided audiences weren't ready for a portrayal of U.S.-backed terrorist attacks following the trauma of September 11. If Pile Phones tell him I called, it would be polite to return the visit. 
It's set against a backdrop of collapsing French colonial rule and increasing US involvement in a region seen as a front line against communism. No one and nothing is as it seems in this thrilling political film. Finally, in the number one position, we find Syriana, a political thriller that unfolds against the intrigue of the global oil industry. You want to know what the business world thinks of you? We think a hundred years ago you were living out here in tents in the desert, chopping each other's heads off, and that's exactly where you're going to be in another hundred. So, yes, on behalf of my firm, I accept From the players brokering backroom deals in Washington to the men toiling in the oil fields of the Persian Gulf, the film's multiple storylines weave together to illuminate the human consequences of the fierce pursuit of wealth and power. ...corporation in America, provided the government approves the merger, provided there's still chaos in the Middle East. Throughout the twisting storylines, audiences are introduced to a CIA operative who uncovers the disturbing truth about the work he has devoted his life to. And an up-and-coming oil broker faces an unimaginable family tragedy and finds redemption in his partnership with an idealistic golf prince. It also sees a corporate lawyer who faces a moral dilemma as he finesses the questionable merger of two powerful US oil companies, while across the globe, a disenfranchised Pakistani teenager falls prey to the recruiting efforts of a charismatic cleric. Your entire career has been used. Each plays their small part in the vast and complex system that powers the industry, unaware of the explosive impact their lives will have upon the world. No wonder this exciting political thriller is considered Cinemania's greatest. Ladies and gentlemen, Sean Connery. In 2006, the 34th AFI Life Achievement Award, one of the film community's most prestigious honours, was presented to legendary actor Sean Connery. The Life Achievement Award was established in 1973 and is presented to a single honoree each year. This honoree's work must have been acknowledged by scholars, critics, professional peers and the general public alike. A fitting description of this legendary actor. What's that you say? I said that you're a lion member of a no good race. Connery is best known to audiences around the world for his role as James Bond and appeared as Bond in seven films, beginning with Dr. No in 1962 and concluding with Never Say Never Again in 1983. Get up. Ah. Certainly. Because of his adventurous personality, when he played the father of Indiana Jones in the action-packed adventure film, he reportedly had to be calmed down. After all, his character was supposed to be a clueless professor. Those people are trying to kill us. I know that! George Lucas continues to admire Connery. Uh, he's one of the great actors of the 20th century, that's for sure. While it's been over 40 years since he first played the role, Connery is still widely regarded as the definitive cinematic incarnation of James Bond. Although his most famous role was that of Bond, Connery has maintained a successful career since. One of his last films was League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Find a madman. To stop him, you must lead a team like nothing the world has seen. Sean has appeared in more than 70 feature films in a career spanning over 50 years and is a true legend of cinema. Extraordinary gentleman indeed. Time now to turn our attention to directors. With their well-loved trademarks and styles, who will come in at number one? At number five, we find Ridley Scott, the most successful British director in Hollywood. He was also one of the first directors to move from making television commercials to feature films. His films are usually recognizable by his use of light and shadows, as well as intricate details. Ridley usually focuses on his character's moves through the camera lens instead of character development. 
He's known as the man who gave the world Alien and Blade Runner. Both films continue to generate positive responses from audiences. It's not just the fans who love his work. His efforts on the big screen have not gone unnoticed by his critics. Ridley has been receiving award recognition for years. While he's still yet to win an Academy Award, he has garnered three nominations for his films, Thelma and Louise, Black Hawk Down and Gladiator. And I will have my vengeance. At number four on Cinemania's list of great directors, we find the legendary Stanley Kubrick. His films often present the dark side of human nature and are known for the crucial scenes which take place in a bathroom. While he's often considered one of cinema's best directors, he's also one of the least prolific, having only created 16 films during his 48-year career. Most of his films earned a cult following, with 2001 A Space Odyssey often considered his best. Others that also garnered noteworthy attention include A Clockwork Orange, The Shining, Full Metal Jacket and Eyes Wide Shut. Kubrick is known to have considered Eyes Wide Shut his greatest film. It was also his last. In 1999, he suffered from a fatal heart attack in his sleep. He remains an influential director and filmmaker. That's why Kubrick's number four. At number three, we find the popular director, Martin Scorsese. Scorsese's extensive filmmaking career means he can take credit not just for creating some of the most innovative techniques in American cinema, but also for inspiring the next generation of filmmakers like Quentin Tarantino and Spike Lee. Scorsese had made it into the industry, impressing both critics and audiences with his emotional editing. Of course, now his films have other motifs, like a New York backdrop or distinct violence. Apologies, my dear. Pick it up. Whoopsie daisy! Films such as Mean Street, Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore, Taxi Driver and Goodfellas have distinct Scorsese flavours. Over the years, Scorsese has earned himself four Academy Award nominations for Best Director and with the quality of work he produces, it's not hard to see why. At number two on Cinemania's list of top five directors, we find a legend of cinema, Mr Alfred Hitchcock. Hitchcock's movies are known for their unique and effective music scores, a storytelling method that Hitchcock had been using since his silent films in the 1920s. The master of suspense once explained his idea of suspense in a BBC interview. He believed that if two men sit in a cafe talking about baseball and there's an explosion, it only scares the audience for a few seconds. But if two men talk about baseball while the audience are shown a bomb under their table counting down, the audience squirm in their seats as they are now involved in the danger of the film. There's a scene where Cary Grant is sent out into the countryside. Now you know it's a setup for him to be shot. And Cary Grant gets out of a bus and stands there. Now the audience is saying, well, it's perfectly normal. What can happen here? That's why the master of suspense comes in in second position. Cinemania's greatest director is Steven Spielberg. Writer, director, producer. To say this guy has done it all is an understatement. The popularity of his body of work goes unchallenged. He's helped revolutionize American cinema in more ways than one. Amongst his many blockbuster releases is the lovable story about a young boy and his friend from outer space. E.T. the Extraterrestrial remains one of the highest grossing films of all time and received Academy Awards for sound effects, visual effects, score and sound, all of which are now trademarks for Spielberg films. Stevens' films also have a track record of successful sequels, like Jaws, Jurassic Park and the immensely popular Indiana Jones, starring Harrison Ford. The Indiana Jones trilogy saw Steven team up with good friend and Star Wars creator George Lucas. 
Directing since he was 21 and part founder of DreamWorks, the name Steven Spielberg is one of the most powerful in the industry. With Jaws credited as the film which began the notion of the summer blockbusters and E.T. launching the profitable concept of product placement, it's hard to imagine what cinema would be like without Steven Spielberg, Cinemania's best director. I know it seems like you have to, but you don't. Do you ever watch behind the scenes footage and wonder what on earth the cast and crew are talking about? Well, you're not alone. Stay tuned for a small lesson on director's jargon. Lesson one is an easy one, action. This doesn't mean the beginning of an action sequence. This is the director's cue for the cast and crew to begin the take. Lesson two, another easy one, cut. This is the direction given to the camera operator and cast to stop what they're doing. During the filming of a movie, all those involved will often view what has been shot, usually what was shot the previous day. This is referred to as watching the rushes or dailies. If the director or the producers don't like what they see, they may schedule a reshoot. Reshoots can also happen after a test screening produces less than desirable results. That brings us to test screenings. This happens as the film is preparing for a general release. Through a survey completed at the end of the viewing, the studio gauges what the wider cinema audience's reactions will be to the film. Test screenings, however, are not always considered a good thing. The director is largely responsible for the film's end result, but if you've ever sat through the credits of a film, you'll know that they don't do it alone. There are managers, assistants, coordinators, assistants to the managers and managing coordinators. Our final lesson is a rather appropriate one. That's a wrap. So what does it mean when the director yells, that's a wrap? Well, this call signals the end of filming and is usually followed by a wrap party. Now you know the jargon, you can think about a career change. Movie trailers are important, especially when it comes to choosing where we spend our time and money. Let's count down some of the industry's best. At number five, we find the eerie trailer White Noise, a film about the dead communicating using untuned radios. In the trailer, we learn that electric voice phenomena, or EVP, is the belief that images and voices of the dead can appear in the white noise that accompanies static. In 1987, EVP believers record and study these voices, claiming they sometimes find communication from beyond the grave. This movie was trashed by critics who were all stunned when the film performed well above expectations when it debuted in America. The intriguing trailer is no doubt responsible for the high box office figures. Mr. Rivers, do you want to hear your wife? Making white noise, Cinemania's fifth best trailer. At number four on Cinemania's list of greatest trailers is the Disney Pixar collaboration, The Incredibles. Expectations for the computer animated creation, superhero satire, were running so high that the pressure for blockbuster success was, well, incredible. Hello, Mr. Incredible. About the job? We know who you are. Something's happened. We have a new assignment for you. What? Showtime. The film's trailer evoked so much interest that when it debuted, the producers realised they had little to worry about. The Incredibles turned out to be incredible. The tale about a family of undercover superheroes continued Disney and Pixar's unbroken track record of computer animated hits. The trailer had done its job and brought audiences to the theatre. 
on my back. At number three, we find the festive favourite, Elf. This hilarious little comedy turned out to be a surprise hit, no doubt due in part to its enjoyable trailer. The story began on a Christmas Eve a long time ago when a baby at an orphanage crawls into Santa's bag of toys and gets taken to the North Pole. When the child is all grown up, the devastating news that he's not an elf is broken to him and he sets out to find his real family in a world that doesn't quite make sense to him. Okay, people, Santa's coming to town. Oh, my God! I know him. I know him. The trailer for this sleeper hit, understandably, comes in in third position. I didn't know you had elves here. You're, you're hilarious, my friend. Did you have to borrow a reindeer to get down here? Hey, you're feeling strong, my friend. Call me elf one more time. He's an angry elf. Look at you. Hey, Charlie. The girls are crazy. At number two on Cinemania's list of greatest trailers is this action-packed, impressive sneak peek at the film Charlie's Angels Full Throttle. I got an idea! Yeah! I'm gonna get free, I'm gonna get free, I'm gonna get free. Get ready! This remarkable trailer enticed moviegoers back to theatres for what was guaranteed to be an action-packed sequel. Jumping out of planes and diving and fighting sharks. I'm a gangster. The title of Cinemania's greatest trailer belongs to Mission Impossible 3. Directed by J.J. Abrams, the third instalment in the billion-dollar action franchise not only starred Tom Cruise, but boasted a stellar supporting cast, including Philip Seymour Hoffman. From the multiple teaser trailers that were released, audiences could tell that the film was going to be packed with the latest in special effect and stunts. You can't help but feel your heart beat faster and move toward the edge of your seat when the signature music begins to blare and Tom Cruise sprints across the screen. Watching this trailer, you can't help but get in the mood to watch a good action film. That's why the Mission Impossible 3 trailer is Cinemania's greatest. That's all we've got time for. Tune in next time for your dose of Cinemania.